I traveled all over the state of Arizona, took about a year and a half, and I finally settled on a piece of property. And did some analysis and all and decided that this was the property that had the gold in it that I wanted to recover. So, what happened is, we began recovering the gold and silver and we would take the charcoal down to our farm. We'd strip it with hot cyanide and sodium hydroxide. We'd run it through, electro-winning cell. We'd get the gold out on the, electro-winning cell. And then we would do what's called a, fire assay, where you run it through a crucible reduction. This is honored procedure for recovering gold and silver and basically, it's been performed for 250 to 300 years. It's the accepted standard in the industry. After we recovered this gold and silver for a couple of weeks, we began to recover something else. And the something else was recovering as if it's gold and silver but it wasn't gold and silver. Gold and silver are both very soft metals and they don't alloy in any proportion that would cause them to become hard or brittle. Yet this became very hard and brittle. When we sent it to the standard laboratories for analysis, all they could detect was gold and silver with traces, and just traces, of copper. Something unknown was recovering with the gold and silver. We couldn't explain. And eventually it got so much of this in our recovery system that actually we were losing gold and silver. And so, you know, it wasn't supposed to be profitable. And so I said, shut the system down. Let's find out what the problem material really is. And chemically we were able to separate the problem material from the gold and silver and I had this sample of pure problem stuff, whatever it was. So I went to Cornell University, where a man had written these papers on doing x-ray analysis and he took the sample of the problem material, which wouldn't dissolve in any acids or bases. It was cobalt blue in color. And he did an analysis on it and he told me it was iron silica and aluminum. I said it's not iron silica and aluminum. He said, well sorry that's what the analysis says it is. I said to myself, I am going to fund the thing myself and I am going to get the answers to it. This was the story of David Hudson. David Hudson proceeded to spend years and several million more dollars researching the mysterious metallic substance that he had discovered. He even employed scientists and laboratories in England, Germany, and Russia to assist him. Eventually, it was discovered that his mystery element had hitherto unknown physical properties. And eventually, it was presented to David and his researchers that they had rediscovered an element that had been known by ancient civilizations. They also learned that these ancient civilizations had cherished this special element for its spiritual and rejuvenating powers. He first named his special element the White Powder of Gold, Later, he nicknamed the material and named it Gormus. What is this special element known only by ancient civilizations? The Old Testament talks about how, during the Exodus, Moses went up into the mountains to pray for 40 days. When Moses came down, he found that the people had made a golden calf and they were worshipping the golden calf. The Bible says that an angry Moses seized the golden calf and burned it, and he then fed the burnt gold to the people. Also, later, during their sojourn through the deserts, the Bible says that Moses fed the people a substance that they called manna, and it sustained them during their time of travail. Moses had been raised by the Pharaoh's daughter and had access to many of the teachings of the high-ranking Egyptian priests. He had learned their secret of processing gold to extract a white powder that was a powdered monoatomic form of gold. This white powder of gold was assimilated by people, and it renewed their DNA in order to re-establish their youthful health. David Hudson had spent $8 million of his own money on this project. Now he felt that he was ready to build an actual plant to manufacture his white powder of gold. But he needed to raise an additional $5 million that would be required to build his Ormus production plant. 
By 1996, he had his $5 million, and construction started on a plant in Tempe, Arizona. By the end of 1998, the plant was almost ready. Then a week later something disaster happened. At 2 a.m., a force of 150 federal agents swept into the plant, claiming that there was a gas leak of poisonous acid fumes that endangered the community. The plant was shut down. Then federal forces brought in a workforce, dismantled the plant, cut all of the steel components into pieces, and took them off to an unknown destination. All of this was done without any due process of law. David Hudson was simultaneously hit with massive lawsuits by the government. He suffered a massive heart attack. He sent out one last sad report to his investors telling them what happened. Then he dropped out of sight and has not reappeared publicly since.